Hey guys, Jay here. So the Phantom 2s is what we're looking at today. This speaker is probably uh, one of the most futuristic, but also the most over-engineered piece of technology, even outside of audio. And that's pretty rare. I mean, for stereo, we know that speakers, amplifiers, DACs, largely hasn't changed over the years. But what DVLA did was quite literally take all those factors and engineer it to perfection to build this really neat piece of tech. And as much as I wanna go and deep dive into all the technology involved with the speaker, I'm gonna just link the uh, website in the description below for you to check out all the kind of technology that's packed into this from DSP to the power, you know, 400 watts. Everything is in the speaker that is to cater to audiophiles and the best sound quality possible in a wireless or Bluetooth type of speaker. In fact, years ago, when I used to work in retail, I used to actually sell the original Phantom speakers from DVLA. And when I first learned about DVLA and their Phantom speakers, I was quite shocked because this thing was unbelievable. I was absolutely infatuated with it. I think that's the right word, infatuated, because it was just a, such a cool piece of tech as someone that was interested in audio getting into this hobby. Now, fast forward, now we have the Phantom 2s, and the Phantom 2s are a much smaller, compact version of the original Phantom, as well as their Phantom 1 that is in their market right now. And it comes out of still a pretty steep price point, and that's just for one, for mono. If you want them in stereo configuration, you have to buy two of them, which brings the price to a pretty substantial amount. However, compared to many hi-fi products where we kind of look at the internals and be like, why is this this expensive? Uh, it makes a lot of sense why this is the price point at its at, especially if you've ever been to those events where they show you a blow up version of their speakers. There's 981 parts inside this small speaker. Yeah, it's really cool, especially when you see it in person. And actually the event that I went to to see this was at Babel Radio, downtown Toronto, a very good store. A big shout out to them for lending me the pair that I have now to review. And again, they're not the sponsor of this video, but check them out. They're, they're gonna take care of you. They're a good business. And I'm pretty sure they have this on demo so that you can actually demo it for yourself if you're ever around that neighborhood. But yeah, don't let the size fool you on this one because this tiny speaker, and when I say tiny, I mean like it's, I can hold it with one hand, like it's on the palm of my hand. It's very, very small, compact speaker. Yet this speaker can go down lower than your floor standards can in a lot of cases. And the measured performance really speaks for itself. It's a really well measuring loudspeaker, but I did take my own measurements. However, DVLA being DVLA and being a very engineered based company, they have their own sets of measurements using Clipple. So I'll link to those as well as someone else comparing that measurement to their own Clipple measurements in the link description below for you to find out how they measure. But they measure pretty darn great and really impressively reaching down to the lowest of the octaves that's almost not even relevant to audio reproduction. Like if you think that the small speaker cannot possibly create the bass that is in your floor standards, you would be unfortunately mistaken. That's what I thought too. The small speaker cannot possibly output the amount of bass that my floor standards can. Yet, they can. Not only they can, they straight up demolish most floor standards in the hi-fi market when it comes to bass reproduction. It reaches low, it punches hard. In fact, it is the most dynamic, punchy bass I've heard at this price point and above, period. To give you a reference, the, this type of bass that I heard is the scale and dynamics is equivalent to something like the Wilson Audio Alexia that I heard back in the day. And I laugh because a lot of you guys are gonna be like, Jay, you're, what are you smoking? Give me what you're smoking because I wanna smoke it because that's crazy. That's crazy talk. The small speaker outperforming or being equivalent to something like the Wilson Alexia in terms of bass punchiness and dynamics and roar in the low bass, that's crazy talk. But if you look at the technology that's involved in the speaker, as well as the fact that the internal pressure of this speaker having two bass opposing drivers just firing away, it creates a internal pressure of 174 dB inside this chamber. This is probably one of the only speakers out there that I can confidently say 
kind of breaks the Hoffman's iron law, which dictates that a designer can only pick two of the three parameters of low base reproduction, small enclosure size, and high sensitivity, basically output level. So essentially this law of physics, or more like a rule, will dictate that if you have a small enclosure size like the DVLA that's capable of low base reproduction as it is, then it won't be able to get loud enough. But that's not the case. This speaker can get plenty loud, and especially with two, it can get really, really loud. But of course, if you're in a large room, then you might be opting in for the more powerful, bigger model that's also not that big again. And the version that I have here is the 98 dB model. They also have a 95 dB model for a little bit less money for those people that don't need that amount of power and output. So yeah, it has capable output, capable sound output, can get loud enough, and has bass, thunderous bass, down to the lowest octaves that only a floor stander can hope to achieve. And we're not just talking about any floor stander or slim floor standers, we're talking about big, big tower speakers. And it all comes in in a wireless Bluetooth configuration with a companion app that makes it very intuitive and easy to set up. But we'll talk more about the app and its features on the later part of this video and my little gripes with it. But for the most part, this speaker can be set up in multiple different ways. One is Bluetooth. The other and the way I used it was AirPlay. And if you're a Rune user, now it's compatible with Rune as well. So quite literally, there's many ways to set this speaker up and enjoy music within under two minutes. And once it's set up, get ready for this small speaker to literally blow your mind away. Because the bass again and the dynamics is unbelievable coming from this tiny little speakers. Just absolutely nuts. And playing my favorite tracks like Limit to Your Love by James Blake, Madness by Muse, Queen Mary by Francine 13, and even throwing in some dead mouse in there, this speaker, not only is it really punchy and dynamic and tight in the upper mid bass, but the overall scale, the rupturous bass, the low octaves, the rumble, the 20 hertz, it's all there. And the scale is like coming from a small speaker, but the bass scale, the dynamics, the, the amount of bass roar it has, the scale of dynamics, quite literally sounds like it's coming from a speaker 10, 20, 30 times its size, and a lot of floor standards can't do what the Phantom 2 here can. And that's probably the most impressive thing about this speaker. If you want quick dynamic bass without the fuzz of having an audiophile setup with amplifiers and separates, this speaker is the way to go. In fact, you can configure this in multiple different rooms in a multi-room setup, kind of like Sonos, but much more high end. You can set one or two speakers up in the kitchen, in the living room, on your desktop. There's many ways to use this speaker. But again, this speaker is tiny and there's compromises that come with that in terms of how it sounds. And so as impressive as this small tiny speaker is, and we should definitely celebrate the DVLA's over engineering prowess here, we should note that this is still a tiny speaker. And with a tiny speaker, even in a room like mine that is around the small to medium sized room, having these speakers set up in a stereo configuration, I did find some stuff that I just couldn't live with as an audiophile. And there's really two things that I couldn't live with the speaker. One could be fixed, the other really you can't fix it. So let's go with the one that you can fix. And that is the overall tone of this loudspeaker. So this speaker really excels at EDM or anything with really deep bass content. However, when it comes to like music pieces that us audiophiles kind of obsess over the nuance and the smoothness of the treble and stuff like that, you know, tracks like My Favorite Things by Young Sona or Waterfall by Sarah K, you know, delicate vocal content. I found that this speaker didn't do as well in terms of bringing out the nuance and the overall smoothness. Um, to say it simply, it did become fatiguing with that little bit boosted high frequency and yes, some other hi-fi speakers can have a little bit of that upper energy, much like my Revival Audios right now that I have going on. But at the same time, those speakers, I found it to be more refined and more smooth and easier on the ears in the high treble. I usually call this a refined high frequency. I didn't quite get that with the DVLA Phantom 2s. In fact, I found the edges to be quite edgy, quite um, sharp and kind of, you know, carved out really well. 
And of course, that helps with things like imaging. This speaker, as you can see, doesn't have much diffraction to begin with. It's basically a circular oval thing, so it has no surface diffraction. So things like imaging is very spectacular on the speaker, like as spectacular as any other speaker can be. Everything is very focused, laser focused, I would say, with phantom center right down the middle. You don't lose that phantom center ever, and you get instrument placements perfectly within the soundstage. And that brings me to my second gripe with the speaker and why I couldn't live with it, and that is the soundstage. Usually in my hi-fi system, I like a wide and deep soundstage, you know, giving me that illusion of being on a real concert hall or, you know, a private concert, something that gives me a wide and deep kind of sound envelope. But with the amount of processing and the way the speaker's size is, I think it takes a toll on the soundstage reproduction because the soundstage is quite literally limited to the plane of the speakers. So you get all the sound right between the speakers. You don't get anything outside of that. And this brings a pretty interesting kind of sound stage that I would definitely describe as small. But it's more than that. It's more than just small. And I think this is where the phrase, there's no replacement for displacement really comes along. Because when it comes to the bass, the scale and dynamics is absolutely insane. But when it comes to the mid range and high frequency, it the scale is, where it's at, it, it, it represents the size of the speakers. So overall, the scale of the sound, the scale of the singer, sing, scale of instruments is smaller. And it makes it feel like I'm listening to a mini miniature versions of the singer, if that makes sense, like a action figure. Now, don't get me wrong, everything was very well separated within this soundstage. Everything was very well separated. Nothing was crowded, even on busy classical tracks. However, everything was just smaller. Uh, to fit everything into that soundstage, everything just seemed a little bit smaller, a lot smaller than what I'm used to. And that may be also due to the stands. It's kind of low and it is kind of tilted towards the listening position but it's still too low for even my lounge chair that I consider to be a pretty low seat. So if you're sitting on a sofa or a normal chair, then this speaker is just way too low with the stands that it's supposed to be matched with, which is also a separate purchase, by the way. And so having these speakers a little bit more up, so I put some stuff under it to kind of prop it up a little bit, did make the soundstage less small, less miniature, uh, but it did still sound, as the size suggests, smaller than I probably would ever tolerate. Now, you might think that's a heavy criticism towards the Phantoms, but it's really not. This is, matter of fact, a very tiny speaker. It shouldn't have the dynamics and the scale that it does in the bass. And that's what's interesting about this speaker. Compared to any active or powered bookshelf speaker that I've ever had in here or ever heard in my life, this speaker has bass capability that is just not comparable to those speakers. And it shouldn't, it's tiny. But when it comes to the mid-range, the high frequency and the sound stage and imaging, yeah, it is akin to any other small, tiny speaker. So obviously when you buy a small speaker like this, you should go in with the expectation that it's not going to have the bass, the mid-range and the high frequency that you're looking for in a big speaker. But this speaker kind of breaks that expectation, especially with the bass region, but not so much with the mid-range and high frequency and soundstage and other aspects that we look for as audiophiles. But hey, when it comes to partying and really impressing your friends, yeah, this speaker is sure to do that. In fact, out of all the speakers I've ever had in here, this one was what catered the interest of my girlfriend and my friends that came over. They were like, oh my God, that thing is amazing. They don't care about anything else in my audio file system, which makes me... <sighs> so yeah, in conclusion, if you are looking for a speaker to replace your audio file system with a minimalistic setup, I personally can't recommend this and say I can live with this because I personally can't. However, maybe the Phantom 1, the bigger ones, possibly, but I haven't tested that in my room yet. The other thing is, if you're looking for this speaker for a party or more desktop oriented setups, man, you cannot have a more of a kick-ass speaker 
than this. However, if you're looking to purchase this, I would be an absolute asshole to not tell you that I had some problems with the software as well. As feature rich as this speaker is, meaning you can EQ and channel balance and all those sort of things, which can fix the tonality issue that I had. If you find it bright, you can bring the high frequency down using the paramedic EQ built into the app itself. However, when it comes to soundstage and aspects like that, you cannot change it, those things are fixed. And the app itself has some issues that I ran into after the update. In the beginning, I had absolutely no issues. So this could be just an issue isolated to this update that I just recently received. But essentially after the update, I had trouble getting these speakers to pair in stereo mode. So this won't be a problem if you have one speaker, one speaker always works flawlessly. But when I tried to pair them in stereo, it's just that one speaker wouldn't play. And I just didn't know why. I would have to unpair them, reset, do it all over again, multiple times, uninstall the app, reinstall the app, run the update again, all that kind of stuff. And I even tried to go back to the previous update, which the app wouldn't let me do. After all this issue, you know, I just figured it would just play sometimes. And sometimes it just wouldn't. So it wasn't a configuration problem. It wasn't user error because I would do the same thing and it would play sometimes and sometimes it wouldn't. So that was a little bit frustrating. And I did find that some comments in the Amazon reviews and forums out there did say that they sold their Phantom specifically for this reason, because they didn't want to bother with the headache of the software aspect of this speaker, which is a shame. And quite honestly, it is one of the reasons that I won't be owning the speaker is because the software is finicky. It is intuitive and easy to use, but only when it works. And I'm only telling you this because it's my job to share my experience with you, good or bad. But again, this may be a isolated incident because I was quite surprised to have ran into these problems because in the past of owning the original Phantoms and having played around with it a lot in the store, I never ran into these software issues. Everything was flawless and easy to use and intuitive and it worked all the time. But with this, I had a lot of issues using the software properly. And that could be, again, just an isolated incident. Just wanted to put that out there that there are complaints about the software being a little bit buggy and not working all the time. And I ran into the same problem this time around. But if you own one or is planning to own one and have these problems yourself, feel free to reach out to DVLA because they do have customer service that's pretty great. And they do have their warranty in place as well. So make sure to contact them to solve your problems and give them a chance. Um, I just didn't because I didn't buy it. It's a review sample. So I'm here to relate my experience to you guys. So yeah, that's pretty much it from me. But I'm curious, do you own the Phantom? And if so, what were your experiences? Let me know in the comment section below. And also, would you? Would you buy a Phantom? And if so, where would you put it? In the living room, in the kitchen, for your stereo setup, for your desktop setup? Because for me, I would definitely put it on my desktop setup if I were to buy these speakers because I know they will kick absolute ass. So that's pretty much it from me. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Make sure to subscribe and click like on this video if you appreciate my videos. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Until next time.